During the pandemic, the Federal Reserve went on an unlimited bond buying shopping spree. Shop till rates drop. Well now they're looking at a shopping cart full of bonds and saying, oh man, we bought way too much stuff. Hope we kept some receipts. I'm talking about $9 trillion worth of assets. So with all this stuff we bought, we're thinking, let's sell the dip. Now before we get into today's selling, let's talk about yesterday's buying. So the pandemic was just getting started and one thing was for certain, we didn't want anyone to be running out of cash. The Federal Reserve immediately implemented the aforementioned program where they went to banks and said, all those loans and longer term debt obligations you have sitting on your books, tell you what, we'll buy all of it for cash at market price. Now that meant that, instead of having all these promises of future cash maybe 10 years out weighing down the balance sheets, banks now had cash, and lots of it, cash that they could use to produce new loans or fulfill withdrawals. Now the goal of all this was to make lending cheap in times that could have been marked with low liquidity and cash hoarding. It worked, arguably too well. For a while there, the Federal Reserve were the only ones buying anything and American businesses were staying afloat largely with cheap cash loans. So that was the pipeline. Cash goes into the banks and then is distributed out to the public, while on the other hand, loans are flowing out of the public to the banks and then to the Federal Reserve. Now this brings us to today, with the Federal Reserve holding $9 trillion in different types of loans. Now to put that $9 trillion into perspective really quickly, that's more than three times all of the dollars that are currently in circulation. Basically Jerome Powell has carte blanche access to how much money that he wants to take out of the economy, by hitting the policy reverse card selling promises of future money for immediate cash. Now into this new term that we've started seeing pop up, quantitative tightening. The Federal Reserve's effort to suck cash out of the system and replace it with the aforementioned web of long term debt. Basically you get 9 trillion dollars in 10 or so years, but between now and then you're sitting on your hands and working with the cash you got in that vault. Great for fighting inflation, but not so great for ensuring that everyone who needs cash can get their hands on it. So now we have our goal, we're going to take money out of the economy to fight inflation, and we have our means of achieving that goal, just a bunch of long term securities designed to soak up some of that cash. Finally, let's introduce the rubber to the road. Now the Federal Reserve interjecting itself into markets and injecting some cash in there is also known as open market operations, and at this scale it's a relatively new thing for the Federal Reserve to be doing. This isn't unprecedented, but it's barely precedented. Fortunately I can tell you what happened the last time we got into this situation of selling, selling, selling. Now back during the 2008 recession, the Federal Reserve famously bailed out a whole bunch of banks by buying a ton of mortgage backed securities at market value, which freed up some of the cash for the banks to lend out. Now a few years down the road, the markets had recovered and the Federal Reserve was sitting on a buttload of valuable assets. Janet Yellen's plan was to just sort of unload some of those security over the next few years and she was saying things like, heh, don't worry about it, this is something that will just run quietly in the background over a number of years, and it'll be like watching pain dry. We weren't so much fighting inflation at that point as we were building a wall to preemptively keep inflation out. So for a few months it was all quiet on the economic front, but then some interesting problems started to pop up out of the corners. These were problems that, depending on your source, may or may not have been connected to this Federal Reserve quantitative tightening program of selling its backlog of loans and bonds to suck some of the money out of the public hands. Now I mentioned that it could or could not be related because when you're covering or hearing news about this story, just kinda know that everybody has their own motivated reasoning for what they're saying. 
For example, banks are of course going to be saying, well, this is all the Federal Reserve's fault. They should keep giving us money and just throwing caution to the wind. Buying all of our stuff with quick cash would have definitely solved this problem, stay that course. And the Federal Reserve on the other hand, well, they're covering their butts and they're saying, whoa, 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 don't look at us. We can't keep pumping freshly printed money into the economy through buying your loans forever. It was reasonable policy and guess what, now the free market has caused those problems. So anyways, back to that story, now that we know everyone's goals and everyone's arguments. A few months after the Federal Reserve started selling their massive backlog of holdings, well, they were having the desired effect, which was a little bit of a slowdown and no inflation. Stocks were down, bonds were down, and there was actual competition for who would get their hands on the cash loans. For simplicity, let me lay out two different scenarios. 2015, you're a bank. You have $5 and five people come asking you for a dollar. All right, you can lend each of those people $1 probably at low interest rates. Then you turn around and sell those loans to the Federal Reserve at market value. Guess what? Now you got $6 cash to loan to the next group of people who approach you asking for a dollar. Now to the second scenario. 2018, you're a bank. You have $2 and five people asking you for a dollar. Well, this is not gonna be pretty. You find the two lowest default risk people and boost their interest rates a bit. Everyone else, eh, figure something else out. Then you hold on to those loans, probably till maturity, or you try to sell it off to someone else. And when the next tranche of people come looking for a loan, well, sorry, I have the last people's loans sitting on my books. If there isn't enough cash for everyone and fresh money isn't flowing in like it used to, you gotta start valuing that limited cash a lot more. So, as we mentioned, things were going as badly as anticipated. No real surprises, just the slowing that we were expecting. Then came 2018, and soon after the passing of the torch from Janet Yellen to Jerome Powell, things sort of hit the fan. S&P suddenly dropped 13% and Jerome Powell said, whoa, 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 we're hitting the brakes on quantitative tightening. Now this is where the narrative really starts to diverge. See, there were a bunch of things happening in 2018, well not compared to 2020, but come on. It seemed big at the time. You had trade wars that were being initiated, we were just starting to yeet out of the Iran deal, and everything was getting blamed on the Federal Reserve strategy. So it's hard to tell who's right. But this massive quantitative tightening wasn't doing anyone any favors. The lack of cash, I would say, is more a magnifying negative impact of minor problems. If no one has money and you scratch the car, well then paying for that scratch is going to be quite a bit more painful than if there was a lot of cash lying around. This would become even more apparent a few months later when short term lending markets exploded in the banking system. In the banking system, there are these overnight markets where banks lend each other a bit of money to make sure that everyone maintains in compliance with the reserve requirements. Basically, you fall out of compliance if too many people, I don't know, withdraw a bunch of money from your vault, or if you know you're just holding too much in loans. If you don't get some cash back into your vault ASAP though, well you're under the 20% threshold and you could face some major federal fines. So if you're a bank that's staring down the barrel of some of those fines, what are you going to do? Well, you find a bank with some excess reserves and you hit them up for some of that sweet, sweet money. They charge you a little bit of an interest rate, but bing, bang, bing, boom, you get the money, you stay above the reserve requirement, everything's good. Then you pay it back the next day with a little interest on top. Those markets are called the repo markets and those loans are called repo loans. The market, well, it was working. That is, up until September of 2019, when all of a sudden, a whole bunch of banks had fallen out of reserve requirement compliance, and there weren't enough excess overnight reserves to bail all of them out. All of a sudden, being a bank with a little bit of cash made you quick king. We all of a sudden saw rates hit payday loan levels of exploitation. You want to borrow that money overnight? 10% <laughs> interest for one day's loan. 10%, that is one heck of an overnight return. 
Now, in the end, the Federal Reserve bailed out the overnight lending markets, ensuring that, in the future, any bank that needed a loan could get one at the federal funds rate that they had set earlier. Then COVID hit, Federal Reserve begins to buy unlimited bonds, and we're in the full circle back to the beginning of this episode. This time around though, when it comes to selling, the Federal Reserve is really pacing themselves quite a bit more, we're not soaking up that much money. Instead, they're emphasizing shorter term money soak ups by entering those repo overnight lending markets I mentioned earlier, but this time as a borrower as opposed to a lender. These Fed agreements that are coming out now are called reverse repos, and the Federal Reserve is basically going to banks and saying, you guys have all this excess cash sitting on your vaults and no one else needs them. Tell you what, why don't you lock it up with us in short term loans, and we'll just sit on it, pay a little bit of interest, mada bing mada boom, how does that sound? Basically, they're playing the Federal Reserve reverse card to all the policies that they had done for the past few years in order to soak up a bit of cash from the economy and fight inflation. Pretty fun stuff. Now, Some of my regular viewers are probably watching this and scratching their chins a little bit because, wait, did he just make an entire episode about the Federal Reserve and not mention the federal fund rate hikes that I generally focus on? Yeah. Open market operations are different but adjacent to the Federal Reserve rate hikes. The difference? Well, rate hikes are kind of like making gasoline more expensive for consumers, while open market operations are like removing gasoline from public access. Similar stuff, prices are going to go up either way, but it's different strategies at the end of the day. If you want to see an episode summarizing the rate hikes, well, that's right over here, and trust me, I got you covered. Until next time, thank you and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube, I'd like to thank my patrons over here for helping me put out my videos. If you want to support independent nonpartisan news looking into the overlooked, join this growing list of exceptional individuals by clicking on that link in the description. Also remember to subscribe and ring that bell so that freedom will continue to ring and give me a thumbs up if you like what you saw. Lastly, as always, thank you for watching.